Hi and welcome to the only show on the internet that proves that not all people from the UK sound smart and or sophisticated Super Mega Store reviews. I'm Andy and it's time to do some video game archaeology. Today we're going to take a Darwinian look at the evolution of the console controller. I'd include PC controllers in the list too, but we don't have enough time for that garbage fire. Console controllers have had a crazy evolution over the past 61 years, and without them, you wouldn't be able to play video games, unless of course you're this madman. Originally, in 1958, your controller was basically the knob on an oscilloscope, and that was in the first recognised computer game ever made by William Higginbotham as a way to attract people's attention at visitors' days. And so, the first ever game was created, and with it, the first controller mechanism. One that even up until the 70s was being used by companies to control their games. Games as big as Pong were using the simplest, most elegant control scheme that controllers have ever had. As arcade cabinets began to rise in popularity and game consoles moved from a one game only system model to a multiple games per system model, that began to change and controllers began to ape the movement setups found in early arcades. Some literally adding an arcade type setup. And of course, joysticks, baby! No, not those ones. Joysticks were the crow magnum of the controller world. They're the first distinguishable step towards what we know now as controllers. But man, they're ugly as fuck, and the embodiment of the saying, when your only tool's a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. I looked into it, but I'm not sure if the controller was held back by the games, or if the joystick held back the games themselves. Either way, some of the advancements in controller technology were dog shit. Thankfully, these ideas never caught on. Praise Jesus! Imagine trying to play Red Dead Redemption 2 with a number pad and knob. Like, the game is garbage using a standard PS4 controller. Just imagine how much worse it would be trying to punch out a horse and having to type your phone number in to do it. But the slow march of progress ensured we wouldn't be stuck in a dystopian hellhole using joysticks for much longer. Soon controllers expanded horizontally rather than vertically, when Matthew Ambidexterson noticed that humans have two hands on either side of their body rather than one in the centre, and thus created the controller for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Keep in mind this was all done in 1983, people got it. The basic shape and layout for controllers was now set and wouldn't be changed in the future, outside of novelty controllers and controllers designed for a singular genre of game. The Mega Drive, or Genesis for you American assholes, had come out and even advanced in the layout, adding a sort of D-pad analog hybrid. That is unless you work for Commodore of course, cause you know, it's the 90s now, we can afford to be loose and take huge fucking steps backwards. I mean the Power Glove was only released a year before. Say hello to the new improved joystick baby. It has a trigger button and suction pads to annoy your hand and not stick to your carpet now. Sometimes you think you've made it past the shit. You're out of the regressive past and it just sneaks right back up on you to club you over the head with its outdated ideas on button layout and controller shape and feel. When that happens though, you've just got to power through. There's a reason Commodore is deader than Jeffrey Epstein and it's not because they were ahead of the times. We're lucky to have the controllers we have now because now I think about it, controllers seem to be the thing that hold back the games that we play. Think about it. Look at how much games have progressed since the creation of dual analogue sticks and VR headsets with movement controllers. So yeah, I've changed my mind. Goddamn joysticks held back gaming for like 27 years. Fuck joysticks. Things stayed kinda standard until 93 when two of the stupidest controllers ever conceived. Not just made, not just distributed, but the stupidest controllers ever thought up were released. The Sega Activator and Atari Jaguar controllers were unveiled to the world. The Jaguar controller being a sort of Frankenstein of the standard controller layout and the ColecoVision, just stupid as fuck, and the Activator being the Sega version of the Nintendo Power Glove, not in aesthetic or utility, but in sheer stupidity. Although the Activator wasn't half as cool. The Activator was like an octagon you could stand in and move around in to simulate button presses. To be fair, it would only take like 20 years till the technology was actually there to make the Activator a viable controller, but they sold it nonetheless. The one good thing to come from terrible controllers of the past would have to be some of the games they held back. Like if the overall progress of games was held back by poor controllers, at the very least, some games are much better for the fact they had a limited control scheme. Games like Asteroid, Centipede, Pac-Man, Space Invaders and Contra would have been a real hot mess if they had a three-dimensional control scheme. They're exquisitely and frustratingly simplistic in equal measure, but it's like those people who've had like 20 kids. 
You don't have to be a good parent for one of them to be a success, you know? As controllers move forward, games move forward with them. The SNES really pushed the boundaries for what was possible in a 16-bit console, with a control scheme that kinda sits between 2D and 3D. Star Fox blew my tiny baby brain when I first played it. It looks like dog shit, I know, but literally everything about Star Fox pushed the boundaries of what was possible in home consoles. For me at least, it was my first experience of an approximation of reality in some small way. Now imagine Star Fox being constrained by an Atari 2600 controller. It wouldn't exist. Moving on from the cosy uniformity of the late 80s to the early 90s now, let's go forward a little to where the shit really hits the fan. We were so close guys, so fucking close, but we had to fuck it all up, didn't we Nintendo? Just answer this one question for me, would you? Who the fuck has three hands? Who? Am I supposed to play Mario 64 holding half the controller whilst a friend holds the other? It's annoying, because it's such a smart controller on one hand, but on the other the layout is fucking god awful. The controller is uncomfortable, it sits in your hand like it was designed for bird claws, and it looks like a poorly photoshopped Mad Cat's PS1 controller. But god damn you Nintendo, you basically invented the analog stick. So props for that I suppose. Thankfully Sony still had their level heads on, and Sega were being Sega, eternally stuck in the past with the Saturn controller. This is how I imagine it going down at Sega HQ. What do you want to do about the Saturn controller design? Add some more buttons to the Mega Drive controller? Perfect! I think we can all agree that I'm absolutely amazing at impressions, and I should take that up as a second career. The PS1 controller was a tiny baby step forward. You could tell that the PlayStation originally started as an add-on for the SNES. The controller is basically a SNES controller in a flashier, cooler shell, more ergonomic and thicker. And we all know that thicker is better. The PS1 controller is the first controller I can really remember evolving, adding rumble and dual analog sticks. The DualShock controller in many ways is still the best controller I've ever used to play a game. The shape, the adaptability, and there's just something about the weight. It just feels right. We wouldn't get a controller that felt right, in my opinion, for a while after this mighty boy. I would have talked a little about novelty controllers before now, but the mid to late 90s was where novelty controllers exploded in popularity. When I say novelty, I'm stitching a lot of categories together because I'm lazy. Light guns for instance are going to be considered novelty because they are for a very specific type of game, same with the Samba de Amigo maracas, though the light guns had way more games you could use them with. The Resident Evil Chainsaw controller and the weird Namco racing controllers will also be included in this. In some of these novelty controllers you can see a lot of potential. You can see a through line to modern controllers or a concept that would only work when newer controller technology was released. The movement and gesture controls in the Power Glove for instance, just make it wireless, a bit more ergonomic and release some games for it and you've basically got most of the VR controllers that are widely available today. And they're all pretty goddamn good. It's probably a stretch, but it could be the Star Trek effect in action, people seeing something definitively futuristic and striving to make it a reality, with the twist being that they had it 30 years ago but it was just total garbage. We should call this the Power Glove effect going forward. I see the Wii as a novelty console too, not from my perspective, but from the general public's perspective. It was a novelty to them, and there are more of them than there are of me, so it's a novelty. And their controllers sparked a deluge of movement based controllers, the Xbox Kinect and the PlayStation Move most notably. All of them are garbage, but the Wii controllers are less garbage I suppose. Light guns are awesome, especially in the UK where you can't just go to your local shopping centre and pick up a rifle or open a bank account and get one for free. Playing games like Duck Hunt, Time Crisis and Point Blank, Die Hard and Resident Evil Survivor made me feel like a real gun toting, rootin tootin, right wing lunatic and American. Especially Time Crisis where, get this, you could use the controller in port 2 on the floor as a pad to step on and off of to reload. Total immersion achieved! Man, I wish they could release a new Time Crisis light gun game. I fucking love those games. In case you don't know, light guns don't work on non-CRT TVs, but just make it VR, please? Then you have the super specific controllers, the Guitar Hero controller, DJ Hero controller, Guitar Hero drums, Donkey Kongas, Sambo de Amigo maracas, Hey You Pikachu voice controller, all garbage, all of them. None of them is any good. Bad controllers, naughty, overpriced, garbage controllers. We also have the insanely branded controllers, the Resident Evil Chainsaw controller. Jesus man, it's gorgeous, 
but like imagine trying to use this to play a game. It's a shelf controller, like it's designed to look pretty and sit on a shelf. I once turned down the opportunity to buy one of these for less than £10 and I regret it because I need this monstrosity in my life now. Then there's the Katana controller for Onimusha 3, the Dragon Quest Slime controller and the GameCube keyboard controller for Fantasy Star Online. All of them monstrosities in their own special way, none of them offering any advantage but taking away comfort and control at the same time. The GameCube keyboard controller offered the ability to communicate, I suppose, but look at it for Christ's sake. Ugh. And we're back to the timeline. Looking at the PS2, Dreamcast and Xbox controllers, they all suck. This would have been the absolute worst generation for controllers if Nintendo weren't back at it again with the best controller ever made. The GameCube controller is the pinnacle of the 2000s controller aesthetic. It fits perfectly in your hand, it's well weighted and the control scheme fits perfectly with the games released. Part of me wants to say that it might not be the best controller ever made because it's still only got one good analog stick, but the C stick is good enough and it makes the controller look amazing. Like come on, this is some pretty shit right here. I think the reason I love the GameCube controller so much is that after it, controllers kinda got boring. You could interchange controllers for most consoles, the layout and basic control scheme are the same for basically everything at this point. The 360 controller was the best of the bunch and obviously the Wii had their weird motion controller but like I said, that's a novelty. The 360 controller won out in almost every way over the PS3's pad, making it seem flimsy and cheap in comparison. It's just the form factor that lets it down and the PS3 had that down pat. This is also around the time that Pro controllers started to hit the scene and I don't really know much about them to be fair, because you'd have to put a gun to my head to get me to pay £150 for someone to add paddles to the bottom of a controller, all so that I can finally get that first sweet victory royale. I just don't get it. I came to terms with my inability to play games at a high level years ago. No company will ever be able to monetize the fact that I've accepted that I'm terrible at computer games. So we live in a boring world. Controllers haven't really advanced outside of VR controllers. The DualShock for the PS4 is just a beefed up version of the DualShock before it with a useless touchpad added. The Xbox One controller is unfortunate because it's attached to the clearly inferior console. It looks like the kind of controller that Batman would design for his Xbox. That's not criticism by the way, there's a little bit of Mole Ninja in us all. The Wii U tried to shake things up a bit. I see the Wii U as more of a sneak peek at the beta versions of the Switch to be honest, but having a screen on your controller was pretty neat and we would never have got Super Mario Maker without it, so like, thanks Wii U for that one good thing. As always, Nintendo innovate and tinker with past iterations of consoles and controllers and come out with these really cool torture devices for the new Switch that seem solely designed to cause intense hand cramps if you play a game for more than an hour. But here's where the Switch really does it, where Nintendo really did it, when they released Smash Ultimate and re-released the GameCube controller for the Switch. That's it! Game over everyone, shut it down, we now have the best console released in the last decade combined with the best controller ever released. We done it guys! <laughs> that was me pretending to cry tears of joy by the way, it definitely doesn't come across like that though. Just it sounds creepy, but it's staying in. Thanks for watching this one peeps, this is a bit of a risk to be honest, we're generally teetering on pretty good retention rates and this by far is the longest video we've ever made. It's a bit drier, but it was a subject that really interested me, so I'm hoping that it comes across in the video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more stuff like this. I've got a few ideas on what we can talk about next. If you hated it, let me know too, because I could use a reason to be depressed instead of just being depressed for no reason. Anyway, if you liked the video, you can find more Super Megastore at twitch.tv slash supermegastore. Twitter is at supermegastore underscore. On Instagram, we're supermegastoreuk. And if you want, you can check out our website. It's www.supermegastore.co.uk. We'd usually make a stupid sexual joke here. However, I managed to make a video without any jokes of a sexual nature. So this part is reserved for the sound of me patting myself on the back. I mean, the only reason there isn't a sexual joke in here is because I couldn't work out how to link vibrating controls and masturbation in a natural way. Still deserve that part though. Thanks so much for watching. Your views, likes, comments and follows really mean a lot to us. We're blown away, truly, by the amount of people that stop by and have a look at each video and who stop by our Twitch streams and say hello. So thanks again. 
Bye. Love you.